everyone. Welcome to English 102 for Unified Track. Today's lesson is Unit 12, Big Sports, Big Business. So before starting the lesson, you need the following. Your English 102 New Language Leader 1 course book, your English notebook, your stationery like a pen, pencil, eraser, or what you need, and a dictionary. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to, number one, classify words related to sports, charity, and business. So we will learn different words that we can use to describe sports, charity, and business. Number two, we will extract specific information from a reading text. So we will learn how to find specific information from a reading text. And lastly, we are going to identify the use of two and enough in sentences. So let's start with answering these two questions. Number one, do you think doing sports is important? Why, why not? Number two, how popular is the World Cup in your country? So now I will give you two minutes to answer these two questions in your notebook. Let's look at some suggested answers. Question one, do you think doing sports is important? Why, why not? And a possible answer is, yes, I believe that it is important because it keeps you healthy and in shape. So it keeps you fit uh, and it's good to exercise. Number two, how popular is the World Cup in your country? And a possible answer is, the World Cup is a very popular event in countries all over the world. And I believe it is fairly popular, popular in my country as there are a lot of football fans. Now let's get to know more words that are related to these three categories, business, charity, and sport. So you have the words in the box, put the words in the right category. For example, the word affair, what does it match with which category? Does it match with the category of business, charity, or sport? For this activity, I will give you four minutes to answer it, and then we will discuss your answers.
All right, let's check your answers together. So, for affair, then we use it for business. And when we say a business affair, then it means a business matter or something that is related to business, a topic that is related to business. Let's look at orphans. Orphans goes under charity. And orphans means someone who does not have his parents. As for racket, then it goes under sport. And a racket is the item or the instrument that you use to hit the ball, for example, when you play baseball. For deal, we use it in business. And what we mean by a business deal, then it means that you can seal a contract. So you have an agreement be between two people, and if you agree between you, then you have a business deal. For poor house, then it goes under charity. Because poor means that people have... Uh, people don't have a lot of money or enough money. As for alms, then it's the money that you provide for people who are in need, for people who lack or don't have enough money. So it goes under charity. Empire goes under sport, and it means the person who sits to watch the game and decide whether the players are following the rules or not. So we can say that the umpire is like a judge in a sports game. For commercial, then it goes under business because commercials also always relate to business. Let's go to the next word, voluntary. Voluntary goes under charity because when you volunteer or when you do voluntary work, then it means you do it without expecting any money in return. So it is for charity. As for employer, then it goes under business because the employer is the worker that works in a company or organization. Windsurf is a sport and it is a water sport, uh, so it goes under the category of sports. Field also goes under the category of sport and the field is the place that you play sports like baseball or football. Olympic also goes under sport, and it is uh, a number of games that is played like the World Olympic. For trade, it goes under business because a trade means that you exchange uh, certain things in business. So these are the words that we can use in each category. Now, do you think there is a connection between these three categories, business, charity, and sports. And if yes, then how are they connected? All right, so I want you now to read this text for one minute and see if your predictions were right or wrong. So I hope that your predictions were right. Now, read the text again and answer the following questions. Number one, you have a sentence. Decide whether it is true or false. Number two, what does the word obligation mean? Number three, 
what is the main purpose of charity work? So what is the point or what is the goal behind charity work? You will find the answer in paragraph one. Number four, what does the pronoun them in paragraph one refer to? So go to paragraph one and find out what does the pronoun them refer to? So who are we talking about? Number five, what does the pronoun it in paragraph two refer to? So go to paragraph two and try to find out what is it? Who are we, who are we talking about? And as for question six, then complete the sentences from the, the sentence from the text. In addition to charity work, Cristiano Ronaldo regularly. So what does he do regularly? For this activity, I will give you five minutes to answer it, and then we're going to discuss the model answer.
Now let's discuss your answers. So the answer to question one is false. Why is that? Because athletes and sports persons don't do it in order for the media to talk about it, but they do it because they want to help people around them. Number two, the meaning of obligation is commitment. So there is no commitment to help the most excluded people. Number three, what is the main purpose or goal behind charity work? And the answer is to help the most excluded people. So to help those people who need more support, who need more help, like the poor, like people who need more education, and so on. Number four, the pronoun them refers to athletes and sports persons. So we are talking about them. As for pronoun it, then it is referring to working for a humanitarian cause. And lastly, we fill in the gap with donates blood. And we can see the answer or we can find it in the last paragraph, last line. Now, since we've learned words related to business, charity, sport, and we have looked at a reading text, now let's move to grammar. And today we're going to talk about to and enough. But let's understand their meaning even more by doing this exercise. So we have sentences here on the left from 1 to 4 and sentences from A to D explaining the meaning of these sentences. I will give you three minutes to match the sentence with the meaning and then I will share the model answer with you.